Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for July 15th, 2021, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we have a, <coughs> excuse me, we have a call tomorrow night, Reverse Aging health call. We all would like to be able to master our thoughts. There are a thousand paths to enlightenment. And there's a million doors we can walk through to experience this moment as divine. Now, one of these precious doors is not so easy or obvious to see, yet we unconsciously step through it every single day. It is a perpetual swinging door of judgment. And we're so often unaware whenever we are passing judgment and oblivious of how it is a secret passageway to the most enlightened and heavenly state of being. No matter if we are conscious human beings or not, mind is constantly judging ourselves, other people, this world, anything that it can get a hold of. The mind was born with this master-like judgeaholic power. It can judge anything in milliseconds. You may not have realized this yet, Probably in the last 15 minutes, your mind has passed at least 10 judgments on yourself or someone else or something in the world around you as either good or bad. The judgmental mind is perpetually busy working away at labeling this life. And this workaholic is a slippery gremlin to catch. We are so accustomed to the mind judging everything in this life. It is as if uh, we've been soaking our hands in warm water for 25 years and we don't realize that it's completely wrinkled and about to fall off. So just to clarify exactly what judgment is. Judgment is the mind labeling something in life as either good or bad, but not both. It is a one-sided viewpoint of existence which separates and divides interestingly. Judgment manifests only when we are living up in the head and are disconnected from our heart. When we are living from the heart, the mind cannot judge. This occurs because the heart is free from duality. And the mind can only exist in duality. Seeing black and white. The heart cannot get hooked in whatever the mind believes is only good or only bad. When the heart is leading the way, we are free from the perpetual prison of the judging mind. If we are to be free from judgment. We must choose to drop out of the head and into the heart. Now, the mind will quiet and become very still. And from this space, we can watch our minds closely and see just how slippery its judgmental habit is. We can see how it tends to avoid what it deems is scary. The mind often believes that if I get what I want, this is good, then I'll be happy. And if I get what I don't want, this is bad, then I'll be unhappy. The more enlightened path, however, is understanding that in this great divine, supreme, all-intelligent universe, we are going to get it all. We always, always, always get what we want and what we don't want. 
For example, we might manifest our dream partner on a soulmate. Only we'll later realize that they trigger the deepest, darkest issues and childhood insecurities to surface every day. Or perhaps we spend half our life running in the great societal rat race, being devoted to striving, achieving big, luxurious dreams and becoming financially free. Only to realize later that we missed out on so many beautiful sunsets while we were indoors chasing some fantasy. Life always both. It's always both. We get death, we get birth. We always get both. And this polar opposite is inside everything that exists. The yin is contained within the yang, and the yang within the yin. The more often we practice seeing, feeling into, and accepting how we always get what we want and what we do not want in this life, the judgmental mind just drops on its own accord. We naturally start living every day in a deep harmony with existence. We become in, actually vulnerable to existence again. And in this sweet humility, we can feel the great perfection of this life. We deeply accept that this existence is the expression of the highest intelligence and that the good and bad judgment plan is the smartest plan available from God to create a spiritual awakening experience inside every being on this planet. You see if you can find a single situation, person, or thing of this world that is only a hundred percent positive and does not always have the tiniest hidden negative byproduct within it. If you think you found something like a new flower budding on an amazing sunset or amazing sunset, just wait and investigate it a bit longer as both sides will eventually show there is always another side to the coin and as the flower will one day wither away, and the amazing sunset colors always fade into the darkness. We always get both. The rose always comes with a few thorns, even if they are small thorns. So we do have the opportunity at any moment to determine and, and choose for ourselves to free ourselves from the judgment habit. We can do this. And we just start by looking deeper into ourselves and accept any judgments that we may have. It's like, I know I'm too fat, I'm too short, I'm too ugly, I'm too poor, I'm too dumb, I'm too smart, you know, too much in my head. Welcome all the judgments you have about yourself. And just don't reject, avoid, or judge them. See them for what they are. They are one-sided judgments that you have about you. And when you can truly see and welcome the judgment, it will have less energy and magnetic pull on you. And in a matter of minutes, the contracting hard feeling around the judgmental thought will lessen, drop in stillness, and you will become truly free from it. As far as this welcoming process works, the secret is moving totally into the experience of judging. When you consciously are feeling only one side of the judgment, awareness grows in you. You cannot fall into that old judgment again so easily next time. You can see just how it impacts your mind, motions, heart. When you remain in a one-sided experience, of life deeply and fully for a long time. Something inside you will soon tire. And then the judgment pendulum just swings to the other side. For example, you may feel and say, I'm never good enough. I cannot do anything right. And after welcoming that judgment and feeling for five, 10 minutes or even 20 minutes, something in you will exhaust itself release the contraction and wake up. This smaller 
more enlightened aspect inside you will sneak in, perceive that on some level you are doing everything right and you are totally good enough. When you welcome judgment, the judgment pendulum soon swings and this allows you to know what perfect peace feels like. Now, some people may think that always welcoming and acknowledging both the good and the bad in this life is just some boring, fantastic, nihilistic, uncreative path that only leads to a state of apathy. Quite the contrary is true. By learning to accept and welcome it all, we find that we are truly okay with everything that it is everything that is, and feel a more spacious quality within ourselves. We feel we have more time to develop our ability to expand consciousness and relax into our lives. From this expanded space, we dramatically increase our manifesting vibration, deepen our state of inner peace, and become a magnet for the most amazing life situations to occur. You will find that the welcoming process is extremely powerful simply because it leaves nothing out. It comes from a deep spiritual place inside each and every one of us that is saying yes to the totality of our existence. We are just not interested in fighting, proving anything, or resisting life anymore. Instead, we move and feel totally fluid like water, without resistance force or control and in this state it's so easy to realize that God is everywhere in everything don't judge a day by the harvest you reap but by the seeds you plant Robert Louis Stevenson it is this deep welcoming mind that creates an enlightened mindset where we actually feel see and understand the divine perfection of this life we become more interesting people as we stop wasting our energy trying to negate others, ourselves, or continuously be upset with the way life is. In a mind that is free from all judgments of ourselves and others, we naturally appreciate it all. We can see that the glass is half empty and half full at the same time. We can feel this infinite empty universe all around us. And also sense how the sun is always rising somewhere on the planet, sharing and radiating its brilliant light. Living in the enlightened mindset is like floating in a sea of orgasm, waves of deep cosmic opening to joy, happiness, appreciation, and ecstasy can actually waft through our bodies at any time. When the mind is not occupied with judgments, we have more energy to make more love, explore our spiritual nature, and taste the freedom that exists at the core of our being. When we can live daily in this enlightened mindset, everything inside us changes. All the previous pain we've been carrying seem to have mysteriously disappeared. We can naturally and fully relax into our divine balance nature and what is one of the most interesting aspects of all is that this judgment free enlightened mind is our most natural state it is already inside us and exists at the core of who we are at the seed of our consciousness itself we can only experience it directly, however, when we have respect and reverence for the perfect balance that exists in everything. And when we acknowledge the divine balance within every situation, person, coincidence, accident, belief, memory, and atom throughout the universe, we can open up to it. The more acceptance we have that there's always good in the bad, and bad and the good, something deeper inside us lets go. We can finally relax into our deepest spiritual experience of this life. When the mind calls off the search, 
for defining and redefining what's good and bad, we have an infinite reservoir of creative energy to surrender fully to our soul. This enlightened light is not just about cultivating a deeper relationship with our minds. It's about getting beyond the mind. Then we master our mind. We no longer live in fear. When the mind falls from its altar, we rise to the summit. As we learn how to drop off the universe to run the entire show, we see how every precious moment in this life has this bigger universal force behind it all. And seeing this, the mind totally gives up, and we realize that we have become the perfection that exists within everything. With enough awareness, we all can totally stop the judgmental mind habit and wake up from the addiction. Then we'll know what real freedom is like, and nothing else will satisfy more than this freedom. This true freedom is free from all forms of pain. It is the greatest experience of this life. This means the mind can slip back into clinging to delusion and desire. And you don't. The mind might crave, whine, and yearn to be free, yet you know that you are the one behind it who is actually already free. You remain the watcher, deeply detached and liberated from the mind's antics. It's the greatest deep eternal love of all when you realize that you are not your mind. The more that we practice um, welcoming judgments, the easier it becomes to see the mind and how to be free from it. When we can always see the good, the bad, and the balanced meeting of the two, then the struggle of life doesn't matter so much anymore. The mind soon gets trained to only see balance and perfection. It automatically observes how the good is in the bad and the bad is in the good, and how these two worlds always collide, and there is nothing left but freedom. There is just the pure observer watching and witnessing it all. Rely on the essence of your pure wisdom mind, not on judgmental perceptions. Rely on the spirit and meaning of the teachings, not on the words. It's a Buddhist teaching. The enlightened judgment free mind is always available and shows up when we release the need to be right and instead create more room to be happy. Happiness through inner peace becomes the goal instead of striving and focusing on surviving this life. With inner peace as the priority, the dualistic mind soon becomes free from attachment, desire, resistance, and contraction. We surrender to the heart and can actually feel deeply okay with whatever manifests and does not manifest in our lives. This enlightened mindset is not hard to achieve. It just takes the most deeply rooted devotion to ourselves. We must be willing to know ourselves intimately and never stray from exploring further about who and what we are. This exploration leads to a profound honoring of the sacredness in all things in this life. We start honoring that this balanced state of perfection is everywhere. And we have nothing. We have nothing. We bow down to this very ordinary life and calling God. We look into a blade of grass and understand how it's just as sacred and important as our entire galaxy. To remain in a judgment-free, enlightened mind every day, we must choose to look at what cannot be looked at and revel in being totally real with our pain. If we wish to remain liberated, we must be willing to see where we are all still in prison, fighting to get out. As long as we are fighting, we are still not truly free. So we must always be aware of the slippery mind. We must choose to never allow the sneaky judgments to take over us again. We must choose to be 100% creative, devoted to continuously being awake, aware, and ready to step beyond a seemingly safe, judgmental world. We must become the black sheep of this world, 
if we are to truly be free. We cannot ever agree with anyone who says that some things are just 100% bad and nothing good at all will ever come of it. We must stop all movement whenever any judgment arises. We must choose to watch our thoughts and beliefs vigilantly. Be totally aware whenever the mind starts believing in some final truth. We must do everything we can so that the ego cannot harden and cling to any opinions formed or thoughts containing right and wrong beliefs. This path takes some serious devotion. Blaming holds you in the energy of the duality of victim and abuser. Forgiving is a direct way of reclaiming your power and free yourself to love beyond judgment, Grace Lohan. Some people will tell you how the universe is not already in perfect design. They might try to make you believe that you should only get what you want and nothing else. This seems like the ideal situation to be in, right? Well, the spiritual awakening process is always much deeper and more complex than it appears to be. If the universe was set up this way, the great mystery would be gone. If we should never know what a block, problem, pain, or failure was like, we would be without direction. We would feel perpetually numb and have no longing to dig deep inside our souls to find our life mission, creativity, and spiritual path. The universe is already set up in the most intelligent manner. It's designed so that we can get a good, solid taste of suffering, anxiety, or inner turmoil and use it to awaken with. Whenever we go unconscious and forget the divine, all intelligent universe is everywhere around us and we instantly suffer. Whenever we allow the mind to form any judgment and register only one side of reality, our problems begin. The universe loves us so much that it doesn't want us to live in any lie. So it wakes us up with a little stress, anxiety, or emotional pain. If we don't stop and drop our judgments, another level of suffering will soon manifest. The path is our most perfect and our most loving teacher. And by welcoming it fully, we are back to our real state of love, enlightenment and freedom. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax our bodies, head to toe, inside and out. You should let it all go. Dump it. Fears, worries, anxiety, stresses, anger, envy, let it go. It doesn't serve you anything. It's just, it's just empty garbage. So we choose to dump it. And when we do dump it, I mean, you can use a hot air balloon and the ballast and the basket and the balloon. You know that you're not going to go up and view the beauty that you are. You're going to sit there on that ground. You're going to sit in that bag. And the more you try, you want to covet the, the ballast, the weight, then you'll never go up. So relaxing the body, you're the master of the body. You're not the body. You're not the mind. You're not the ego. You're not the subconscious mind. So when your body does really, really relax, you'll know how do you know it really relaxes. Because you almost feel like you're floating. And you really have no concern about the floating. When this happens, we move into the now, the space between heartbeats, the breath that you take, the now, the moment, moment to moment. 
So the now stills the ego and the mind and the subconscious mind. They take a back seat. The men were the watchers. We aren't judging. We're watching. This is how we master the ego mind, the subconscious mind. We just watch them. And when you look at the body and you understand that you're in the now, you're not in the past because the past is dead. It's inert. No life. Future doesn't exist because we haven't created it. We create the future in the now. Now, some of us, well, I'd say all of us have, you know, we have memories and we have, we reminisce and we interact with those. And we visit a lot of our good ones and happy times. And sometimes we go into the not so good ones. So we remind ourselves of where we came from and why we're here. Some of us, though, will stay in that past way too long. So much so that we will drag it into a future that doesn't exist and create that future from that past and relive that past in that future. This is why a lot of people will say to themselves that we don't, we never seem, we, we always end up here no matter what we do. Others of us will jump into a future that doesn't exist and we, we will just wander wander and we'll ask ourselves questions. Why don't I have this? When am I going to get this? What is this going to happen for me? When is that going to happen for me? How come this hasn't happened for me? And we just, we, we incessantly go through this. But then there's those of us who stay in the now. And the now is really, truly all we have. You don't have tomorrow because you don't know if you'll be in tomorrow. Why would you make plans five years from now? It's, it's ludicrous. It's absolutely silly. So the body's relaxed. You're in the now. How do you stay in the now? Because we have tens of millions of these program thoughts that float by us every day in the, in the clouds. Like clouds in the sky. Now, a lot of times, inadvertently, we'll grab one and we'll float off. And we've all done it more than once. None of us are exempt from it. Did you ever focus on something and all of a sudden you find yourself just going off in different directions in these other thoughts? Now, You can bring yourself into the now any time you desire to bring yourself into the now. When you find yourself wandering off and in in through gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness with yourself, your divine positive energy is your breath. So when you do find yourself wandering off, focus on the divine positive energy of your breath 3,000% of the time, you'll be in the now. Now in the body, we notice that there are seven wheels of life from the tailbone to the top of the head. Seven. Now, they, they appear to be balls of light. And they seem to have like these different geometrical shapes in the centers. And they look like different flowers, all different colors. Now, you the God that you are, the divine positive energy which sustains you, the God, in the body. As you power the body, everything is up and running. The lungs produce the oxygen to sustain the vessel of the kingdom of God. And understand that you flow through these energy vortexes, these chakras, and you branch out everywhere. All of the organs, all of the tissues, everything that body is, you, the God, flows through it. But you notice that the, these vortexes, starting off with the root chakra, the red middle of light, 
It's right at your, the tip of your tailbone. And it deals with survival, you no know, money, finances, uh, food, clothing, shelter. And it's blocked by fear. Now, I could guarantee you a group of us could be in the wilderness just dropped there out of the clear blue. All we have is the clothes on the back of our backs. Now, we immediately start relying on each other to survive. But any of us that panic or have fear will usually end up perishing. And remember, fear is just a thought. Then we move to the orange wheel's light, the sacral chakra. This deals with our pleasure, joy, bliss, happiness well-being, prosperity, abundance. It's phenomenal. It's our natural state of being. When you are having a really good time and everything is flowing wonderfully well, as if it's, a, it's almost like magic, it's boom, 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 and then you start getting this feeling of guilt. I shouldn't be having this much fun. You know, there's a lot of people in pain out there. You know, I don't deserve to have this much fun and happiness. And, and, and by generating that, guess what? The guilt wins. And then we move to the yellow wheel of light, which is the solar plexus chakra that deals with willpower. And it is blocked by shame. And then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, our heart chakra, and this deals with our ability to love. This is blocked by grief. If you're in grief, you can't love. And then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the Vishuddha. It deals with truth and is blocked by lies. And then we move to the indigo wheel of light, the third eye chakra, which deals with insight, and it is blocked by illusion. And then we move to the crown chakra, the violet wheel of light. This deals with cosmic energy, our direct connection to the divine, which is you. And of all things, it's blocked by ego attachment. So when you, the God, flows through that body and these things are going on because the mind and the ego of that body has generated these thoughts of fear, guilt, shame, grief, lies, illusion, ego attachment. And so the God, the divine positive energy, the breath is top of the head. Now, we can condense ourselves in any shape or form we want and desire. So... You can literally turn yourself into pure liquid energy and then pour yourself over the pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland is really important to us while we're in these physical forms. Because when it's fully functioning, happy and healthy, it connects us to all the particles of existence. All of them. All that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, and beyond that. Now, you can look at it, you know, through your heart, mind, motion picture. Uh, however, you see the pineal gland, I see it as a red ball, a rose ball. And as soon as I pour myself over it, it immediately transforms into this massive, fully blown, multicolored petal rose. It sends off shimmering waves of the purest, deepest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. And the fragrance is just absolutely phenomenal. Then, you know, I discovered that that, that shimmering and that energy and that saturation and the deepest of eternal love is me. 
I discover that I am the rose. The rose is me. These bodies, ego mind, heart mind, subconscious mind, higher self, spirit, soul. All one. And the soul coming into the body is the heaven on earth, the body's the earth. And we know, those of us who are somewhat awake, consciously aware, that every single step we take, we're creating paradise. That the light within us, the, the, the God force, love, light, energy, we're shining at 360 degrees unendingly. And it just fans out. And, you know, it expands. So if you were to, to to view this planet from afar, you would see a brilliant light. And you would look at that and you would look at all the stars and you'd say, wow, the stars are really look dim. So the vibrational frequencies of this planet and of the civilization are increasing. Some in major leaps, some in average, and some in small. Now, we, obviously, we seek the other parts of us that are awake, consciously aware. Now, so some parts of us, as we all know, are asleep. Now, they're not going to hear us, and they really, truly won't be in this meditation because they don't hear us. But those that do will. So, such as the, all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Yet only those that are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. Now, they come in the Googaplexes, and one Googaplex fills this entire universe with no sacred space to spare. Not even an inch. That includes all the ones on this planet, on it, in it, above it, and below it. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every day in, in thousands of Google places. You understand that everything as one moves as one together. All parts of the one, the whole. So the universe teeming with life. And all the universe is teeming with life. The ones that we're somewhat familiar with are the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur, and many, many, many more. Now, with the eyes that we have with these bodies, we only see 1% of what is. That's why they come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, which we've never seen. And only those that are consciously aware. That they're running from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, and I'm from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and peace. And literally in the Googaplexes, they are with us now consciously. We call upon all the off-worlders, all the galactics, all the celestials, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, to form this circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now. 
And we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Countless numbers travel through this solar system every day. Unlimited numbers throughout existence every day. And the ones that we're familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the feline, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion, many, many, many more. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment. Ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they are with us now consciously. We call upon all of the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, and dark and beneath it. Yet, only those that are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light in the complete liberation of this planet. Earth Gaia are in this now. And they come in the billions, and they're with us now consciously. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have sent out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited, yet only those that are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming of this circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And in the billions there with us now consciously. We reach out to the archangels, cherubim, seraphim, the archetypes, the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda Christ, El Moria, Abundantia, Hell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua, many, many, many more. Now, the archangels are a civilization that vibrate at a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But we do meet with them. And we do, they do pass us by. And a lot of the times it dawns on us, something in our heart mind says, hey, that, that was an angel. And, and they have, and then you experience some bliss, a good feeling. And the the same message, but it's delivered in countless ways. It is an absolutely magnificent, glorious, stupendous to be alive in these bodies. And it is, and it is bliss. Now, they can surround any one of us in the tens of thousands because of their vibrational frequency. They can hold a large number in a small area. And if you want them to, just ask. The the ascended masters have mastered ascension into physical form and out of physical form, hold pure God form, pure consciousness. And they both are with us now consciously. We're all gathered arm in arm, hand in hand, in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one. And we're all God. And we're all love. And our God force love light energy continues to intensify and continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This this light emanates from the God force love light energy deep within every single one of us. 
it is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. In fact, it would take over a thousand trillion suns even to come close to its brightness. And this brightness is of what we are, what we're made of, the highest of the deepest, 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 purest, purest, purest eternal love. And it's flooding this planet. And it's flooding all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Everyone and everything. And it's doing it perpetually, continually, infinity. All of our brothers and sisters head to toe inside now. It's absolutely spectacular. This is the love that we are. We can we begin to ascend above this planet. As we do, we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. And it is massive. It has countless Google plexes of reflecting lights, colors. I'm, all of us gathered here on and off world. And we look at the, the point of reflection. We, we literally move in on it and we see it's a microscopic, perfectly etched mirror. We move into it and we understand that we discover that all of us are students and teachers of each other. We're constantly learning with each other, from each other, to each other. Always. It's absolutely magnificent. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. We were then met with a purple flaming blue light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe inside and out, we are Im literally immersed, flooded, saturated from head to toe inside now with a white fire armor. It's much different than a, than a knight's armor, or body armor, or anything like that. It emanates from the God force love light energy. It cannot be penetrated. It cannot be violated. No demon possession. No lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. Nothing can harm us. Zero zilch. Yet. Only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough through hate, anger, fear, frustration, envy, deception, manipulation, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, consciously or unconsciously, you're immediately met with two columns of light. One is the purple transmuting flame. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are literally absorbed and vaporized forever. Then the violet ray. This is a column of light that reminds us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. And we can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high of the deepest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the sun rises and the sun sets. 
you know, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the sky, the clouds, the soils, the trees, the forest, the animals. We are everything and everything is us. So the next time that you see a sunset or sunrise or an ocean front, it is you that you are viewing. It is the God that we all are. It is you that is the beauty, the majesty, the divinity, the spectacularness. It is you. It is all of us. We continue to ascend above this planet. Some of us step outside our physical form and, I, and float effortlessly above our physical if we're carrying physical. And why do we do this? Well, because we can we come into full contact with this massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower, larger than the solar system. And the center of the column is this massive oblong sphere. And the center of the sphere is this massive golden white ball of light. It is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light. We're all sending out these massive shimmering waves, saturating, flooding all of us, head to toe inside now, endlessly. The golden white bowl of light is the highest of the deepest, 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 purest, purest, purest eternal love. And then gratitude. And then peace. And then gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Great well-being, great prosperity, great abundance, tranquility, benevolence, bliss, joy. It is us. It is a reflection of the gods within each and every single one of us. Now, at the top of this crystalline tower, we designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees like it's doing right now flooding this planet and all life, the highest supreme value in the universe with the purest, the deepest eternal love. Now, we are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. The drops are the golden ocean, the golden ocean are the drops, and the only illusion is separation. We're then met with our meditative sphere it's that center circle we created this sphere over three years ago it holds nearly 1500 of our meditations and perpetual motion perpetual motion means always never ending hundreds of millions of us on and off world every day for over three years with the highest of the highest highs of intent of the complete liberation of this planet its population into the higher and higher and higher frequencies of pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, peace. In deep silence, there is no mine and no thine. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close this out.
take an easy breath in through the nose. And an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Loneliness is where you are missing the other. Aloneness is when you are finding yourself. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening, night, and following morning. And we will return here Friday, July 16th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our Global Guided Meditation call. And 9 p.m. to continue our Reverse Aging Health call.